August 15, Jeremiah is imprisoned. When the Babylonian army left Jerusalem because of Pharaoh's approaching army, Jeremiah started to leave the city on his way to the territory of Benjamin to claim his share of the property among his relatives there. But as he was walking through the Benjamin gate, a sentry arrested him and said, You are defecting to the Babylonians. The sentry making the arrest was Erijah, son of Shalemiah, grandson of Hananiah. That's not true, Jeremiah protested. I had no intention of doing any such thing. But Erijah wouldn't listen, and he took Jeremiah before the officials. They were furious with Jeremiah and had him flogged and imprisoned in the house of Jonathan the secretary. Jonathan's house had been converted into a prison. Jeremiah was put into a dungeon cell where he remained for many days. Later, King Zedekiah secretly requested that Jeremiah come to the palace, where the king asked him, Do you have any messages from the Lord? Yes, I do, said Jeremiah. You will be defeated by the king of Babylon. Then Jeremiah asked the king, What crime have I committed? What have I done against you, your attendants, or the people, that I should be imprisoned like this? Where are your prophets now who told you the king of Babylon would not attack you or this land? Listen, my lord the king, I beg you, don't send me back to the dungeon in the house of Jonathan the secretary, for I will die there. So King Zedekiah commanded that Jeremiah not be returned to the dungeon. Instead, he was imprisoned in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace. The king also commanded that Jeremiah be given a loaf of fresh bread every day, as long as there was any left in the city. So Jeremiah was put in the palace prison. Jeremiah in a cistern. Now Shephatiah, son of Matan, Gedaliah, son of Pasher, Jehuchal, son of Shelemiah, and Pasher, son of Melchijah, heard what Jeremiah had been telling the people. He had been saying, This is what the Lord says. Everyone who stays in Jerusalem will die from war, famine, or disease, but those who surrender to the Babylonians will live. Their reward will be life. They will live. The Lord also says, The city of Jerusalem will certainly be handed over to the army of the king of Babylon, who will capture it. So these officials went to the king and said, Sir, this man must die. That kind of talk will undermine the morale of the few fighting men we have left, as well as that of all the people. This man is a traitor. King Zedekiah agreed. All right, he said. Do as you like. I can't stop you. So the officials took Jeremiah from his cell and lowered him by ropes into an empty cistern in the prison yard. It belonged to Melchijah, a member of the royal family. There was no water in the cistern. But there was a thick layer of mud at the bottom, and Jeremiah sank down into it. But Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, an important court official, heard that Jeremiah was in the cistern. At that time, the king was holding court at the Benjamin Gate, so Ebed-Melech rushed from the palace to speak with him. My lord, the king, he said, these men have done a very evil thing in putting Jeremiah the prophet into the cistern. He will soon die of hunger, for almost all the bread in the city is gone. So the king told Ebed-Melech, Take thirty of my men with you and pull Jeremiah out of the cistern before he dies. So Ebed-Melech took the men with him and went to a room in the palace beneath the treasury where he found some old rags and discarded clothing. He carried these to the cistern and lowered them to Jeremiah on a rope. Ebed-Melech called down to Jeremiah, Put these rags under your armpits to protect you from the ropes. Then when Jeremiah was ready, they pulled him out. So Jeremiah was returned to the courtyard of the guard, the palace prison, where he remained. Zedekiah questions Jeremiah. One day King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah and had him brought to the third entrance of the Lord's temple. I want to ask you something, the king said, and don't try to hide the truth. Jeremiah said, if I tell you the truth, you will kill me. And if I give you advice, you won't listen to me anyway. So King Zedekiah secretly promised him, As surely as the Lord our Creator lives, I will not kill you or hand you over to the men who want you dead. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, This is what the Lord God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. If you surrender to the Babylonian officers, you and your family will live, and the city will not be burned down. But if you refuse to surrender, you will not escape. This city will be handed over to the Babylonians, and they will burn it to the ground. But I am afraid to surrender, the king said, for the Babylonians may hand me over to the Judeans who have defected to them, and who knows what they will do to me. Jeremiah replied, 
You won't be handed over to them if you choose to obey the Lord. Your life will be spared and all will go well for you. But if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. All the women left in your palace will be brought out and given to the officers of the Babylonian army. Then the women will taunt you, saying, What fine friends you have! They have betrayed and misled you. When your feet sank in the mud, they left you to your fate. All your wives and children will be led out to the Babylonians, and you will not escape. You will be seized by the king of Babylon, and this city will be burned down. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, Don't tell anyone you told me this, or you will die. My officials may hear that I spoke to you, and they may say, Tell us what you and the king were talking about. If you don't tell us, we will kill you. If this happens, just tell them you begged me not to send you back to Jonathan's dungeon for fear you would die there. Sure enough, it wasn't long before the king's officials came to Jeremiah and asked him why the king had called for him. But Jeremiah followed the king's instructions, and they left without finding out the truth. No one had overheard the conversation between Jeremiah and the king, and Jeremiah remained a prisoner in the courtyard of the guard until the day Jerusalem was captured. A Vision of Living Beings On July 31 of my 30th year, while I was with the Judean exiles beside the Kabar River in Babylon, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. This happened during the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity. The Lord gave this message to Ezekiel, son of Buzi, a priest beside the Kabar River in the land of the Babylonians, and he felt the hand of the Lord take hold of him. As I looked, I saw a great storm coming from the north, driving before it a huge cloud that flashed with lightning and shone with brilliant light. There was fire inside the cloud, and in the middle of the fire glowed something like gleaming amber. From the center of the cloud came four living beings that looked human, except that each had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, and their feet had hooves like those of a calf, and shone like burnished bronze. Under each of their four wings I could see human hands. So each of the four beings had four faces and four wings. The wings of each living being touched the wings of the beings beside it. Each one moved straight forward in any direction without turning around. Each had a human face in the front the face of a lion on the right side, the face of an ox on the left side, and the face of an eagle at the back. Each had two pairs of outstretched wings, one pair stretched out to touch the wings of the living beings on either side of it, and the other pair covered its body. They went in whatever direction the spirit chose, and they moved straight forward in any direction without turning around. The living beings looked like bright coals of fire or brilliant torches, and lightning seemed to flash back and forth among them, and the living beings darted to and fro like flashes of lightning. As I looked at these beings, I saw four wheels touching the ground beside them, one wheel belonging to each. The wheels sparkled as if made of beryl. All four wheels looked alike and were made the same. Each wheel had a second wheel turning crosswise within it. The beings could move in any of the four directions they faced, without turning as they moved. The rims of the four wheels were tall and frightening, and they were covered with eyes all around. When the living beings moved, the wheels moved with them. When they flew upward, the wheels went up too. The spirit of the living beings was in the wheels, so wherever the spirit went, the wheels and the living beings also went. When the beings moved, the wheels moved. When the beings stopped, the wheels stopped. When the beings flew upward, the wheels rose up, for the spirit of the living beings was in the wheels. Spread out above them was a surface like the sky, glittering like crystal. Beneath this surface, the wings of each living being stretched out to touch the other's wings, and each had two wings covering its body. As they flew, their wings sounded to me, like waves crashing against the shore, or like the voice of the Almighty, or like the shouting of a mighty army. When they stopped, they let down their wings. As they stood with wings lowered, a voice spoke from beyond the crystal surface above them. Above this surface was something that looked like a throne made of blue lapis lazuli. And on this throne high above was a figure whose appearance resembled a man. 
From what appeared to be his waist up, he looked like gleaming amber, flickering like a fire, and from his waist down he looked like a burning flame, shining with splendor. All around him was a glowing halo, like a rainbow shining in the clouds on a rainy day. This is what the glory of the Lord looked like to me. When I saw it, I fell face down on the ground, and I heard someone's voice speaking to me. Ezekiel's Call and Commission Stand up, son of man, said the voice. I want to speak with you. The Spirit came into me as he spoke, and he set me on my feet. I listened carefully to his words. Son of man, he said, I am sending you to the nation of Israel, a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been rebelling against me to this very day. They are a stubborn and hard-hearted people. But I am sending you to say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or refuse to listen, for remember, they are rebels, at least they will know they have had a prophet among them. Son of man, do not fear them or their words. Don't be afraid, even though their threats surround you like nettles and briars and stinging scorpions. Do not be dismayed by their dark scowls, even though they are rebels. You must give them my messages, whether they listen or not. But they won't listen. For they are completely rebellious. Son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not join them in their rebellion. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Then I looked and saw a hand reaching out to me. It held a scroll, which he unrolled. And I saw that both sides were covered with funeral songs, words of sorrow, and pronouncements of doom. The voice said to me, Son of man, eat what I am giving you. Eat this scroll, then go and give its message to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he fed me the scroll. Fill your stomach with this, he said, and when I ate it, it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he said, Son of man, go to the people of Israel and give them my messages. I am not sending you to a foreign people whose language you cannot understand. No, I am not sending you to people with strange and difficult speech. If I did, they would listen. But the people of Israel won't listen to you any more than they listen to me, for the whole lot of them are hard-hearted and stubborn. But look, I have made you as obstinate and hard-hearted as they are. I have made your forehead as hard as the hardest rock, so don't be afraid of them or fear their angry looks, even though they are rebels. Then he added, Son of man, let all my words sink deep into your own heart first. Listen to them carefully for yourself. Then go to your people in exile and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Do this whether they listen to you or not. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard a loud rumbling sound behind me. May the glory of the Lord be praised in His place. It was the sound of the wings of the living beings as they brushed against each other and the rumbling of their wheels beneath them. The Spirit lifted me up and took me away. I went in bitterness and turmoil, but the Lord's hold on me was strong. Then I came to the colony of Judean exiles in Tel Abib beside the Kabar River. I was overwhelmed and sat among them for seven days.